welcome today i will start with oo genesis oo genesis formation of female gamete from primordial germ cell before proceeding the process of oo genesis first of all i will talk about the anatomy of female reproductive tract here in the lower wall of pelvis and lumbar region here are two flat ovoid structures these are female gonads these female gonads are located on posterior superior wall of pelvis and there are two funnel shaped structures tubular structures known as fallopian tubes or oviduct and a pear shaped central muscular organ which houses the developing embryo nourish it nurture it it is a muscular organ pear shaped and lower narrow part of this organ it is uterus these tubes are known as fallopian tubes and these tubes are also called as oviduct or uterine tubes the central muscular organ which houses the developing embryo and fetus is known as uterus and lower constricted part narrow part is known as cervix this opens in tubular muscular part which opens in the external environment is vagina these flat ovoid structures which are female gonads are known as ovaries ovaries develop from genital ridge and the remaining parts fallopian tube and uterus develop from mullerian duct now i will talk about is general anatomy of ovary ovary is having a central core and a peripheral part known as cortex the outermost part of ovary is covered by flat cells or low columnar cells these are simply mesothelial cells of visceral peritoneum the inner part of this epithelium is formed by dense irregular connective tissue and this part 
is known as tunica albuginea. These are mesothelial cells. Previously, it was believed that these cells are predecessor of the germ cells. But now it has been proved that the germ cells are not migrated from these mesothelial cells. This whitish part is known as tunica albuginea. Inner part of tunica albuginea is occupied by primordial follicles and inner part is having growing follicles which are larger in size and the central core of ovary is occupied by the, med the medulla The central core is having blood vessels and lymphatics and having medullary cells which are equivalent to Leydig cells of testes and outer part that is cortex is having spindle shape cells and fibroblasts besides these it is also having fibroblasts which are spindle shaped cells besides these primordial follicles and growing follicles this part which is having lymphatics and vessels and nerve system is connected by meso-ovarian by broad ligament and it is connected to the uterus by ovarian ligament. Now I will discuss about the formation of female gamete that is ovum or sometimes it is also called as egg but it is not egg egg is a fertilized structure and having a shell of calcium and other materials this oocyte or ovum is not fertilized and it is not having a shell of calcium and other materials. So I will call it ovum. So oogenesis, the process of oogenesis it starts in very early life of embryonic period of a female inside her mother's womb. So I have divided oogenesis in two parts. First part which is occurring inside mother's uterus and the second part occurring after birth. So here is prenatal development or prenatal part of oogenesis when the female child is inside her mother's womb this is uterus
here is trilaminar disc during third week and here is yolk sac and here is amniotic cavity in the dorsum of yolk sac near the allantois here is allantois and here is developing hind gut so cells from dorsum of yolk sac through dorsal mesentery migrates in this genital ridge these cells which are migrating from the dorsal wall of yolk sac are known as primordial germ cells these primordium or primordial germ cells are having a genetic material in form of 46 chromosomes that is 1n from mother that is 23 and 1n from father that is also 23 so there are 23 pairs of chromosomes in primordial germ cells i will call these 23 and 23 as two small n these chromosomes are having genes which are formed by dna so amount of dna is 2 n when i say two small n i am talking about the number of chromosomes and when i say two capital n i am talking about amount of dna so in primordium germ cell there are 23 chromosomes from mother and 23 from father so number is 2n and amount of dna is 2n the 2n chromosomes are single structured having centromere large and small arms p and q and small parts of dna are embedded on chromosomes these are known as genes total 23000 genes are houses by the 46 chromosomes of a cell so these germ cells divide by mitosis and transformed in the other form of the cells known as oogonia this transfer of primordial germ cells start in the third week end of third week or in the first phase or first part of fourth week up to third month of intrauterine development all germ cells are migrated in the developing ovary or genital ridge after all germ cells are transferred in genital ridge or ovary these cells are converted in oogonia at the end of third month so during the third month of intrauterine life 
there are no primordial germ cells. All primordial germ cells are connected in the oogonia. These oogonia are also having the same number of chromosomes that is 2n and same amount of DNA that is 2n. These oogonia divide by mitosis and these cells are seen in bunch form like this at the end of fifth month there are seven millions oogonia as the time passes by the size of oogonia increase rapidly and these oogonia which enlarge in size are now known as primary oocyte and at the same time as I have already taught that ovary is covered by mesothelial cells these cells are precursor of the covering cells of primary oocyte so these cells will cover the bunch of developing oogonia and the largest oogonia which enter in first meiotic division and it duplicate its chromosomes and replicate its amount of DNA it will be 4n and it will be 2n but it will be double structured it will also form a sister chromatid and amount of DNA will be doubled and will be replicated as the time passes by all oogonia will disappear and only one oocyte known as primary oocyte will remain inside the covering of these flat cells primary oocyte covered by the flat cells is known as primordial follicle as the time passes by the size of primary oocyte will increase nucleus will be enlarged due to having condensed chromatin material so this structure which is having primary oocyte which has entered in first meiotic division and it is arrested in prophase of first meiotic division the covering cells are known as follicular cells these follicular cells secrete meiotic inhibitory factor so when cells of primary oocyte enter in first meiotic division after synapses and chiasma formation it will happen like this two chromosomes will homologous chromosomes will come in close contact to the other this is known as synapses then chiasma formation and then crossing over 
of the chromosome segment. Here is one part. So segment of this chromosome is crossed over to the segment of other chromosome. It is known as crossing over. The phases of first mutic division are leptin, zygotin, pachytin, and the last stage of prophase first is diplotin. So, primary oocyte plugged in diplotin of first meiotic division due to meiotic inhibitory factor secreted by the follicular cells. At birth, all follicles in the ovary are primordial follicles. So at birth of female child, there are two million primordial follicles with primary oocyte arrested in diplotin of prophase first. So the number was 7 million at the age of 5 months of intrauterine life. The number is reduced to 2 million at the time of birth. So more than 5 million oogonia and primary oocytes are degenerated and these form the interstitial part of ovary. Now I will discuss about the oogenesis after birth or postnatal development of primary oocyte. Oogenesis postnatal. These primordial follicles which are having a primary oocyte arrested in diplotin of prophase first and having a layer of flat cells. There are two million primordial follicles at the time of birth. From birth up to puberty or when the female become sexually mature the two million primary oocytes <coughs> arrested in diplotin number is reduced to 40,000. So about 1.96 million of primary oocytes are degenerated and form the part of ovarian stroma. <coughs> The number of chromosomes in this is 2n but it is double stranded or double structured and the amount of RNA sorry amount of DNA is 4n due to formation of sister chromatids. Now at the time of puberty and time of menarche when the menstrual period in a female starts a cohort of 10 to 20 
primordial follicles undergo growth and development under the influence of some local hormones and some signaling process which are managed by surrounding stroma of the ovary and primary oocyte itself. <clears throat> Before proceeding, I will draw again the ovary. Ovary is having outer cortex and inner core. As I have already told, there are 40,000 primary oocytes inside the primordial follicles, which are lying in the outer surface or outer part of the cortex. A cohort of 10 to 20 primordial follicles enter in a growing phase and these follicles will grow in size. First of all, I will draw primordial follicle here. It is having a large primary oocyte and covering of flat cells, single layer. This structure is known as primordial follicle. When the cohort of 10 to 20 cells or 10 to 20 primordial follicles enter in growing phase due to influence of some local signaling chemicals and some local hormones uh, which are ZDF9 from primary oocyte and BMP15 from the primary oocyte and from the surrounding cells there may be PTEN PTEN and TCS1 in initiation of growth of follicles is independent of FSH. So FSH is not having a role in initiation of follicular development. These cells which are flat will start some structural changes and cells will be cuboidal or low columnar. These are low columnar cells or cuboidal cells. Now this follicle is known as growing follicle but, is, but it is having primary oocyte arrested in prophase first in the protein stage. At the same time, the cells of oocyte start secreting a homogeneous substance of glycoprotein and acid proteoglycans there are three types of pro glycoproteins in case of human being these are known as zp1 zp2 zp3 
and ZP4. This amorphous homogeneous chemical which is secreted in side the follicular cells and outside the primary oocyte and the vital line membrane. This is known as zona pellucida. This zona pellucida plays a critical role in fertilization and implantation of developing embryo. This follicle is known as growing follicle. Now, as time passes by, these cuboidal cells which are having a single layer of cells which rest on a basement membrane which is lying outside this follicle is avascular as time passes by these cells which are lying outside and known as follicular cells are now known as granulosa cells and by mitosis these cells will divide and form a multi-layered multi-layered granulosa cells There are multiple layers. These cells, which are known as follicular cells, now these cells are known as granulosa cells. And these cells rest on a basement membrane which separate the follicle from surrounding ovarian stroma. Inside these cells, there is a homogeneous layer of glycoprotein and proteoglycan, acid proteoglycans. This layer is known as zona pellucida. This is a striated layer and having pore-like structures known as transzonal processes. Transzonal processes from which the developing oocyte gains its nutrition and here is vital end membrane or oolema and here is nucleus of primary oocyte which is still stuck in prophase first diplotin so here are zona transzonal zonal process this type of growth when this primary oocyte enlarge in size the ratio of nucleus and cells normal ratio is 1 is to 4 to 1 is to 6 in normal cell to gain nutrition and messenger RNA and proteins to control the mechanism of cells this cell's growth is known as oxygenic growth. When one cell increases in size rapidly and it can't fulfill its 